So hello everybody, Cubase 14 is out and it got quite inspired by Bitwig. For example, they support this open door project format, which allows you to exchange project files between different doors. So far it was Studio One, Reaper and Bitwig and now also Cubase came to the party, which is great. It's still buggy as I found out in my last video. If you didn't see that, check that out as well. But it's great that they support this approach as well. And what they also did, they have now modulators. So it seems Bitwig inspires now other door manufacturers as well. And if you have never heard about modulators, let's take a look first what they do in Bitwig. So I loaded here three plugins. Two of them are deactivated. The first one is a VST instrument. So we have here Arturia Uno Emulation 6V. So very simple synthesizer loaded. And I made a very, very boring MIDI clip here. <laughs> So not impressive at all. So let's try to make this a bit more interesting by doing some modulations on the sound. And this works that you have on each of the devices, this little icon here below. And if you click that, you see these three plus signs, which allows you to insert a modulator. And if these are filled up, you will get another row and another row. So you can have as much modulators as your hearts like for such a device. And here for any other devices, there's the same thing. And yeah, you can modulate the hell out of that stuff. So let's have a listen to that. So for example, let's do the totally creative thing. And let's say, let's modulate here the frequency of the filter. And let's do that by an LF. Oh, not very innovative, but always does the trick. And if you click here the plus sign, you get a plethora of modulators. So Bitwig basically supports everything you can dream of for modulation. You have tons of envelopes, tons of different LFOs. You have also external envelope followers. You have little sequences. And yeah, there's a ton of stuff, macro controls. And that's not the intention of the video to show all of them. Let's just have a look at these that are also Cubase supports and Cubase currently supports much more limited ways. So we have an LFO, an envelope follower. So this is an envelope and you can have a macronope and a step modulator. And this one is interesting. So there you get, I think it's JavaScript code. So you need to code your own modulator. So interesting, but that's quite a step up from a modulator to do scripting. But nevertheless, it's an interesting approach. So let's say we have five modulators here. I think it's closer to the truth than this sixth one. So here's also an LFO, but let's look at that in Bitwig. So as I said, we have tons of LFOs here. Let's go with a simple beat one, which is synchronized to a beat. And you get this little area here where you see already running what it does. And if you click the blue little arrow here, all the knobs will become active, but you can also simply touch or move it up here. But if you do it here, you can also directly edit the range. So you here you see the last knob I touched here in the user interface, which was already the cutoff. And here you can already set the range, as I said, but maybe let's undo that and first make a usable setting. So let's say we want to have it here and then we modulate around this frequency. So let's do that. And now you can simply move it and you see it's starting to modulate in that area. And yeah, let's have a listen to that. And that's a bit fast for our taste. So you can click here this arrow and you get the user interface for the LFO and we can slow that down. Maybe a bit faster. So something like that. And you can hide that away and we still see what's going on and have a pretty clean interface still. So that's the first thing. So let's have a look at that in Cubase. So Cubase here, we have the same setup. I added also here this Uno emulation from Arturia. And yeah, that's already something. You need to click that icon up here to get to the window. So I didn't see anything down here that you can open the window as well. So you have to do that here. And yeah, but nevertheless, let's add an LFO. You see this takes up quite some space here. You have a big screen running here. And I think we had 
There's no real triangle. Let's go with that one. That's one's just a different one. There's no triangle here. Well, maybe let's do the, can we do the shape? Okay, you cannot really get it triangly. Okay, let's stick with, with that one. That's, that's the job as well. And here you have large mapping knob. So if we press that one here, we can move the frequency as well. And you see it's mapped, but you could not directly here set the range. You need to do that down here. So here you can, can still change here the frequency and you see the area where it's moving. And with this little, little tiny fader, you can set the intensity. So this is really, really a little bit tricky here to navigate. You can also inverse it. Maybe let's, I think something like this was similar to the what we had in Bitwig. And let's also have a listen to that. I did the similar sounds here. Maybe a bit still a bit too intense. As I said, it's, it's really clunky here. What is that there? Ah, here can enter the value. Oh, I didn't want to. Okay, similar trick. So you have that area here. And let's do another one. Let's go back to Bitwig. Let's do something more to the sound, for example. Let's modulate the noise. Let's see how that should sound. Yeah, something like this would be nice. So let's add a second modulator. Let's have a, a step, so a step sequencer for that. And there you see also some steps and we want to modulate again. You see here the noise volume is also here. So we could also have the range and I want full range now for that one. And let's have a look at the control. So let's have a listen. Cool, but you could tweak that as much as you want. There's you can move that left to right, clear it, do some random stuff. So yeah, that's your playground here. You can do uh, lots of stuff and you can hide it away and still see what's going on here in this little graphics. And you have it together with your device. And I think that's a little bit harder to see here with that one, but let's first do a step. So we have the step modulator, here it is. We can also map this on noise and then crank it up full speed. And you need to do something here as well. Is it also random? You can also move it to the left and the right. So that's pretty the same. What does that do? Number of steps can be changed. That's the same in Bitwig as well. What is that? I have no idea. You can change, ah, you could, this is also some, ah, okay. You can also do something like this. Let's have a listen. Yeah, okay, so similar things. So much for the modulation of the synthesizer. Let's also modulate an effect and I add it also here. That's what drove me over, it is crazy. <laughs> In Cubase you have to open this plugin somewhere else as your instrument device. So you need to open the mixer and there you can have here also access to the phaser. And then you need to click that one to get it. And yeah, could be easier, I guess. And okay, but let's activate that. So here it's active again. Let's have a listen to that. And let's also put now a macro knob. So a mac knob allows you to control several parameters with one knob. Let's, for example, pick here the def and crank that up with that one and do maybe, let's get rid of that. Do the opposite on the right hand side. Also have something like this. And if I now move the knob, you see they will move into different direction. Maybe let this make this one a little bit more extreme. And then we have it like this. Okay, so let's have a listen. Okay. 
Okay, also this works fine. And you could now also modulate that one, for example, with a step modulator. This does also work. I'm not sure if it goes backwards, but let's try the simple way. So I could here now map this knob as well. And now as you see, it's modulating as well the macro knob. <laughs> Okay, and these modulators show up per track. So if I go here to another track, you get the same thing here and we are back again. And I think, yeah, that's a little bit of an issue here. It's really, really big and I think it's a bit confusing. It's really hard to see what you are actually modulating and which device you're modulating here. I can see phaser A def, okay, but you need to look pretty closely to see what you're actually modulating on that track. Let's do the same in Bitwig. So here we are. Here we have the phaser as well. So we have that here. We can do the same, open that up, and we wanted to do a macro. So also here we have a macro. You can have four at once or just one is enough, I think, for the time being. And let's also modulate here, put that down, put that up and put that in a different direction. No, we need to do that here. So click that again, click on mapping, do it backwards. Exactly. So we have now that and Oh no, I wanted to have it in the other direction. Ah, whatever. Let's do that here in that direction. So here we have the modulation. Now we can turn the knobs. Here we go to the same direction, but we could also change that again. Yeah, let's have a listen to that. <laughs> So this does also work and it gets especially nice in Bitwig if you modulate devices which are from Bitwig. So here you see directly the mapping. For example, if you want to map here an LFO as well, or we could also do something else. What else cool we have? You have also a multi-segment envelope, so also MSEC curves. That's uh, MSEC here. And here you can do wild things as well. You can open the MSEX up so you can select pretty wild stuff. Let's do something. Let's look at that one looks funny. And here you can modulate, for example, the feedback. And if you go now here onto the mapping, you directly see what you're doing and how much it's happening. And you also see what is actually mapped here. Even if you hide that away again, you still see here's modulation happening. So that's really the advantage if you use between internal devices with modulation. And it saves space here. And yeah, let's, let's have a listen. So really cool sound. So it's really easy to do sound design with modulators. And I was Trying the same in Cubase, I thought if I maybe use some of their own plugins, maybe something happening like that as well, but this is not the case. So if you here do now also maybe, let's put a shaper on something here, on the feedback. It's, yeah, it's showing the modulation, it's moving the knob, but it's... <laughs> That's also interesting to note. So as you see, that's a very, very big difference. In Bitwig, the, mod, the knob is not moved. If you take a look here, the knob is still here. You can still change the knob position and the modulation is on top of that. In Bitwig, this is not the case. It turns here the full knob, so you cannot really change it here. It's jumping around. So you would need to do that here. Yeah, so this is a, a little bit of a problem. I think one thing is it's a little bit big. And the second thing is it's hard to see the relation between the modulators and the actual parameter.
But nevertheless, it's a first try from Steinberg's side, and I think the more the merrier. And it's always good to have different implementation, which might also give new ideas for other companies. And yeah, tell me what you think. Which one do you prefer? Do you like it? Do you dig it? And until next time, make some funky music. <laughs>